Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. A Southgate man asked the community for help after a late night walk with his dog goes terribly wrong. New tonight, what put him in the hospital? Plus, the Michigan GOP cries foul over Governor Whitmer's flight to Florida. You'll hear reaction from both sides of the aisle. But first, the local four defenders getting new information on plans to stop the violence in Greektown. Off the top tonight at 6, this disturbing video has gone viral like several other videos we've seen over the past couple of weeks. Yeah, the Saturday night brawl is just the latest in a string of violence that's erupted at night in Greektown. Let's get to local four defender Sean Lay, who joins us live from Greektown tonight. And, and Sean, officials say the uptick in violence is certainly concerning. Really concerning the city, the businesses here and the police want to do something about it. They've been talking all day about that viral video you just saw from what happened here this weekend. So here's what we're learning is that police are considering a zero tolerance policy for any type of illegal activity down here. They're also talking about shutting down some streets to control the flow of traffic, control the flow of people and anyone caught doing something. They may be seizing cars as well. It's happened again. Another outrageous brawl in the heart of Greektown Saturday night into Sunday morning. The crowd's now so big, some so out of control. Police and security are overwhelmed, being pushed to the ground. Listen to what one business owner told us before all of this just last Friday. The police can do nothing. They have nothing they had to do. Today, the only thing that business owner had to say is for Mayor Duggan and Chief James White to come down here to see the crowds and chaos for themselves. This is a problem. Melanie Markowitz with the Greektown Neighborhood Partnership calls it. When we spoke on the phone, you used one word that this is unacceptable. Yes, this bad behavior is absolutely unacceptable and will not be tolerated. Tanisha Gibson, she's in Greektown. She's in town from Minnesota. We showed her what it looked like over the weekend. It's definitely discouraging. Um, however, I don't think that it would stop, you know, tourism. Back here live. Here's what's happening now from that video from over the weekend. Detroit police going over cameras and there are dozens of them right down Monroe here, plus body camera footage trying to identify everyone involved to go after them next. We're live in Greektown tonight. Sean Lay, local four defenders. OK, Sean, thank you. Devin. Members of the Michigan GOP speaking out after filing a complaint last week against Governor Whitmer, all centering around the governor's flight to Florida in March, being paid for with campaign money. Grant Herms joins us live with a breakdown of the complaint. Grant. Well, Devin, they didn't have anything to add to that complaint after they filed it last Friday, but the GOP, the executive director of the state's Republican Party, today giving broad strokes of that complaint and what they're saying the governor did wrong. Today, the Michigan GOP continuing their crusade over the governor's trip to Florida on a private jet using money from her inauguration nonprofit, outlining the party's recent complaint to the state's Bureau of Elections. There is nothing about that trip that would justify using the C4 that was set up for her inauguration uh, back in 2019. Republicans are arguing the governor violated campaign finance laws by taking the jet between March 12th and March 15th to visit her chronically ill father. The governor says she continued to work during the trip and her campaign says the use of funds is legal, although she will be paying for the cost of her seat and the seats of her daughters on the return flight. The GOP disagrees. This is 100% a trip that was for the governor's personal benefit. There was no campaign activity involved in any way, shape or form, and there is no justification for the governor to use her campaign to pay for this personal trip. The most recent complaint comes after another conservative group filed an IRS complaint about the trip, and the FAA has launched an investigation into the company that owns the jet, PVS Chemicals, after questions about whether the jet could be used as a charter were raised. The Michigan Democratic Party responding to the complaint, calling it bogus and part of, quote, a never-ending obstruction against the governor. Now, ultimately, whether or not this complaint gets taken up is up to the Secretary of State, Jocelyn Benson. Back in 2019, she did issue fines for a pro-Whitmer group for violating campaign coordination laws in the state. They were forced to pay about $40,000, so Devin will see what she does next. Uh, Grant, they also answered questions today about whether they're going to be calling for an audit of the 2020 election. We've seen a similar situation in Arizona. 
Right. There, there have been calls to that over the weekend. There was that large rally up in Antrim County. Right. Now, the Republican Party says that they are not focused on the audit. They're focused on the midterms in 2022. But there are some rumblings coming out of Lansing that there may be a bill filed this week to push for an Arizona-style audit mm. here in Michigan. Another thing we're keeping a very close eye on this week. We sure will. We'll be watching Lansing. All right, Graham. The state's coronavirus case count and positivity rate have declined for the last seven weeks. The state reports 419 new cases. That's a two day total from Sunday and today. Sadly, we've lost 11 Michiganders to the virus in the last 48 hours. On the vaccine front, 59.7% of Michiganders have had at least one vaccine dose. The Tigers are set to return to full capacity at Comerica Park for the game against the, the Seattle Mariners. A pop-up vaccination clinic will be held across the street at the Fox Theater. Fans getting the shot will be given two tickets to the Tigers game that day or to an upcoming game. The clinic runs until Sunday. One of those days where you might feel like if you've just taken a shower and you step outside, you've suddenly taken another. <laughs> it is muggy out there. And ben uh, joins us with a first look at tonight's forecast, and we could see some thunderstorms too, Ben. Yeah, that's the uh, the trigger for this. Over the weekend, we didn't have that humidity to sort of fuel uh, the pop-up thunderstorms in the afternoon, although it was plenty hot. Today, we've got the humidity, and boom, here they are. Thunderstorms have been at least scattered around. Not everybody's seeing it. The one place where we're seeing some uh, at least good downpours right now across northern parts of Santa Lac County. All of this stuff is moving to the northeast at about 25 miles per hour, so it's not going to be long for the world. But there are definitely some lawns they're going to look a little bit greener tomorrow uh, than others. But don't worry because we've got multiple chances of doing this again for the next six days. Temperatures tonight into the 70s, but man, that humidity makes a huge difference. We'll tell you when it's finally going away and when we can ditch these afternoon storm chances coming up. Well, local forecasters app has actually got the answers to that. So all the 10 day forecast and more. You can get it for free in your app store by searching WDIV. Devin. Ben, the FBI and Detroit police digging up remains at Gethsemane Cemetery as they check to see whether people have been buried in the right place. Detroit police tell us one of the seven graves dug up today was in the wrong location. That grave was Desmond Stimson's. In April, his family spoke to Local 4 after they went to move him to another cemetery and found he was not where he was supposed to be. Now, several other families are awaiting word on their loved ones. This is sad for a lot of us. A lot of people are over there right now, you know, in tears and, and, and heartbroken. And it's like visiting, revisiting this all over again because we just want to know. We just want closure. Now, police are quick to point out this is not a criminal investigation. They are going to be exhuming a total of 20 bodies. Former Detroit City Councilman Gabe Leland will spend the next two and a half years on probation. Leland pleaded guilty last month to misconduct and office charges. He admitted to accepting $15,000 and free car repairs in exchange for a favorable vote on a land deal. Leland also resigned his seat as the council member for Detroit's 7th District. That seat is still vacant on the City Council. As part of his plea deal, several federal bribery charges are being dismissed. A simple nightly dog walk went wrong last night in a Southgate neighborhood. It happened near Dix Toledo Road in Eureka, and now one man is asking for his community's help. Our Kim DiGiulio shows us what happened after a woman lost control of her car. Justin Danich was at the corner of Leroy Street and Cameron Avenue Sunday evening when he came across a woman walking her dog. I believe it was a pit bull, black with white spots. Justin says he walked around this construction zone with his dog, Charlie, when he heard. She screamed, pick up your dog. Justin quickly grabbed Charlie, but before he knew it, the dog had started biting him. And I turned and then that's when he started uh, biting my arm and then she was trying to get the dog and then I kept turning, he let go and then he jumped up, bit my arm again. You can still see the blood out in the street from where it actually happened in the circling around trying to uh, get away from the dog. Justin says the woman had to lay down on the dog to stop the attack. That's when he took his dog Charlie back home and asked the woman to stay here while he called the police. But when he came back, she was gone. Last night I ended up having to get the series of shots in this side over here on this bite and then this bite and I got to go back a few more times, uh, three more times to get the rest of the rabies shots. Justin says he's thankful he wasn't walking with his 13 year old daughter like he usually does. Come on, buddy. That's a good boy. But he's nervous about something like this happening again to someone else. I always see kids and 
elderly people walking their dogs. I mean, yeah, I'm 200 pound guy, six foot. You know, I'm, I'm all right. And he's asking the woman who owns the dog to be mindful of the people in this neighborhood. We all love our dogs and pets, but again, things happen. You know, I mean, um, if you can't control your dog like that, then please don't take them out. I mean, it just takes one time for something like that to happen. In Southgate, I'm Kim DiGiulio, Local 4. All right, Kim, thank you. And if you were in the area during yesterday's attack, give Southgate police a call. Still to come, a famous summertime treat inspires Fago's newest flavor. We'll have that coming up, and here's Dr. McGeorge. How many of the new COVID cases are in people who have been vaccinated? And why are we still seeing deaths from a review of records? I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Coming up, I'm answering those questions and more about the vaccines and the virus.